Okay, let's start talking about an implicit differentiation free response question. And with this, we're going to be looking at not really the process of finding the derivative of an implicit equation, but actually analyzing the equation itself and the derivative that they gave us and finding stuff like tangent lines and vertical tangent lines and all that. And we're going to start with this equation given to us as this one and they also give us the derivative of y with respect to x for us so they already did the, all the calculus part for us they want to just have us analyze it and this can be tricky because it can be hard to understand what the problem exactly is trying to get at and how you're going to go about solving it so part a write an equation for the line tangent to the curve at the point negative one comma one when I look at this one, I see the word equation for the line, tangent, right? Equation of a line. I'm probably going to just start writing a general form of a point slope formula just to help me think about what I need. Usually when they say, when they give you something, you should probably write something that you know. For example, the equation of any type of line. Maybe you might want to write a derivative formula just to help you out. This is just for reference, so it helps me out in my thinking. And maybe it might help you if you write it out on the top. Like this is the first line I would say, just from the information I pull out. And from this, it actually starts helping me because I see I have a point, so I can actually start plugging that in. This would be plus one because it's minus minus one. And then I see I just need m. M. So M is the slope. I need to find the slope. Luckily they gave us the slope formula or the derivative. So we basically just need to plug it in or I guess the notation you would use is something like this and then you just plug it in straight up. So 1 divided by 3 times 1 squared minus 1 or minus minus 1 which gives it a positive 1 and then you get 1 fourth so then I can just plug in one fourth and we are done with this problem. We don't really need to solve for y because it already is a line tangent to the curve at this point. It's a very simply, I guess, given to us in this simple process. We don't have to go extra steps and solve for one and find a slope intercept. We just need to find a tangent line equation and there's no point in simplifying when this answer is already correct and it's I guess unsimplified form if you want to say it like that it's acceptable this one is and you'll still get the all the points so it's not worth trying to simplify something if you might make a mistake in it so that's why I'm gonna leave it like this and it's still acceptable let's look at question 2 question 2 says find all coordinates of all Find the coordinates of all points on the curve at which the tangent line to the curve at that point is vertical. So we need to find coordinates, so that's always helpful, right? So part B, I'm looking for a coordinate x, y on the curve for which the line tangent to the curve is vertical. So the tangent line, or yeah, the tangent line is vertical. So how do you think about vertical lines? That's also, I'll just draw an example of a vertical line, right? Is this a vertical line here? What is its slope is what I would think about. I would think about its slope. And I know what the slope is, but if in case you don't know the number or like the thing that represents this vertical slope, we look at this slope, which is zero. Then we look at this slope, which is one. And then we just start increasing it. We, I guess, logically increase the value super fast, this slope is infinity, it has an infinite slope. Or it might have a negative infinite slope, which is why it's undefined, because we don't know which one it is. Um, let's see, vertical, we have infinite slope. When does that happen? When does the slope become infinite? They gave us a fraction, so it must be the denominator that makes it zero or that makes it have an infinite slope if you consider just any random fraction let's say 0 0.1 like this this is 30 right as soon as I 
start adding zeros here, 0 0.01, it would be 300. And then I do it again, it would be 3000. As I approach zero, this thing will just keep on going forever. In other words, it's going to be infinity. So if the derivative of the slope of the derivative is infinity, we should have the denominator equal to zero. So that's the reasoning that we're going to take. We're going to set this to be zero. And we get 3y squared is equal to x. And that doesn't seem like it gives us a lot of information. All right. So what can we do with this? We can't really plug it in back to the derivative formula because all it does is pretty much nothing. Um, we're not looking for a slope. We're looking for a point, right? That's why I wrote it out first. We're looking for a coordinate. So what tells us coordinates? We have to look at the um, equation they gave us first, the first implicit equation. y cubed minus xy equals 2, because this can tell us points of x, y. If we know what y is, we know what x, right? This condition right here just tells us that this specific relationship it will have an infinite slope. So if we plug in x, we're going to find a y that and an x that gives us a infinite slope at that point. So let's do that. Um, let's do that. I had to take a little cut there because something just happened. Um, I don't know what happened with my computer. It just sometimes does weird stuff. But let's continue, right? What I was saying here is that this relationship we found at this exact relationship, we can find coordinates where it has infinite slope. And why, by substituting that, we can actually start finding the coordinates. So if I do, it would be 3y minus uh, 3y squared times y, so 3y to the third equals 2. I can combine these because these are like terms. Negative 2y cubed equals 2. In other words, y cubed is equal to negative 1. And we know this value, if you take the cube root of negative 1, we get y is equal to negative 1, right? Negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 will equal negative 1. So that's the answer, and that's the only real answer that it will be. Now, how do we find the x-coordinate? We just simply plug it in back to the equation, right? This is kind of like a, um, if you want to think of it like a systems of equations, where this is an equation right here, and then this is the other one. So we're just finding x, y, right? So negative 1 cubed minus um, x times negative 1, so it's positive x is equal to 2. Negative 1 plus x is equal to 2, or x is equal to 3. So we found that coordinate. It's 3 comma negative 1, and that's the answer. I'm going to erase everything so we can do part C now. So, okay, part C. Evaluate the second derivative of y with respect to x at the point on the curve where x equals negative 1 and y equals 1. So, we want to find the second derivative, which they don't give us, so we have to start finding it, right? So, dy dx is equal to y divided by 3y squared minus x. What is the derivative, the second derivative, right? I want to specifically take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. And now I just want to start finding the derivative. The left hand side will just be the second derivative. And the right hand side, we will have to apply the quotient rule, so let's do that. I'm going to find the numerator function, which is y, the denominator function, which is 3y squared minus x. I'm going to find the derivative of the numerator function, which is y prime, or the derivative of y with respect to x. And then the derivative function of the denominator, which is 6y. And then we have to do the chain rule, so we'll multiply it by the derivative of the inside, which is y prime, and then minus 1. And now we just plug it all in into the quotient rule formula. I'm going to write it up here. The quotient rule formula is saying this. 
the way I just remember is I have to take the derivative of the numerator first. That's pretty much it. And then the rest will be, you just switch it and then you make the denominator squared. That's the way I remember it. If you sometimes forget which one goes first, I just remember differentiate the numerator. That's all. So we just plug this in. y prime times g, which is 3y squared minus x um, minus f, which is y, times g prime, which is 6y, y prime minus 1, all divided by um, g squared. So that is 3y squared minus x and all of that squared. So how do we go about evaluating this thing, right? This thing looks pretty messy right now. Let's see. Well, I do know what y prime is, right? From the previous example, we found it the slope to be this, which is this basically the derivative, right? So anytime I see y prime, I can just plug in 1 fourth. Every time I see y, I can plug in 1. And every time I see x, I can plug in negative 1, right? right? Because it's just the point right here. And then the slope, which we found in the previous example. Another way you can go about it is every time you see a y prime, you have to plug this in. But that's kind of a lot of work, and it can get really, really messy because it's fractions on fractions. So I just need to, if I just evaluate this right now, and every time I see whatever that is, I plug it in 1 fourth, it saves me a lot of work. So 1 fourth times 3 times y, which is 1, so I'm just going to leave it like that, minus minus 1, so plus 1, minus y to 1, times 6y, y prime, so 6 times 1 times 1 fourth, minus 1, all divided by 3y, which is 3, right, 3y squared is just 3 times 1 squared, minus minus 1, so plus 1, all of that squared, right? Be careful with the algebra, because the algebra is the reason people would get this wrong. Um, maybe the calculus on some people, but most people is actually just the algebra, because they are going either too fast or they just forget one simple parenthesis and it messes it up all, messes all of it. So I'm going to go through this pretty slowly. So 1 fourth times 4 minus, let's see, 6 times 4 minus 1. What is that? That's um, 3 halves minus 1, so that's 1 half. And then we want to divide by 4 squared, so that's 16. In other words, it's just 1 minus a half, which is 1 half divided by 16, which is um, 1 half divided by 16. So what is half divided by 16? It's 1 over 32. Um, oh, well, let me scroll it a little bit. I was a little off screen. I think that is good enough. Let me zoom out a little bit, actually. That's probably even better. Yep, so we have it all. So it's 1 over 32. And that's the second derivative at that on that point, negative 1, comma 1. And we just have to be really careful with our algebra specifically, and maybe sometimes our calculus, of, of course. But that's the main idea of finding the second derivative at a point. And this is a, just a good example I found. Um, you really make sure you know exactly what these derivatives actually mean, right? It's always the slope or the formula for the slope. And it can be done with implicit equations, it can be done with explicit equations like functions and all that. And just remember that the derivative will find the slope of the tangent line at the point. And that's mostly the key takeaway of this one, but also this one works with a special type of, I guess, equation, the implicit equation. So getting used to doing all stuff with implicit equations. As you can see, it's not too different from regular equations, just remembering that y is a function of x. So that's it for this video.